Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to review the LaForge V4 receiver module for Fetcher Goggles. In this video, I'm going to go through its features, show you how to set it up on your Fetcher Goggles, and finally, I'm going to go outdoors and compare the LaForge V4 side by side with my Trudy receiver. The V4 comes in two parts. First of all, you can buy the main Fetcher module, which inside you get in the plastic cover, the module itself, and 90 degrees SMA adapter and this cable for the diversity module. The diversity module can be purchased separately and it's not mandatory. Of course, if you're going to buy it, it's going to allow the diversity option. And inside we get in the diversity module, a plastic cover, and also a 45 degrees SMA antenna adapter. The V4 sports up a couple of really nice features. First of all, on the bottom of the receiver we can find a micro USB port that will enable you to update the firmware of the receiver and also use it as a spectrum analyzer on your computer. On the top right we can find a microphone and for the settings of this receiver you can choose if you want to use this microphone when recording DVR. In addition, on the bottom we can find two pads, the LED and ground pads, and if you want you can use an external LED module and place it on the front of your Fetcher goggles and then you can change its colors through the settings of the receiver, so if you want to make your goggles a little bit more interesting you can buy this model separately. This model also takes advantage of the Fetchlock built-in channel buttons, so you can use them in order to change the channels. And finally, the highlight of this receiver is that everything that is going to be shown on this screen is also going to be overlaid on the video and you're going to see it on your Fetchlock goggles, so that's pretty convenient. When you're going to install the V4 inside your goggles, you have two options if you want to use the diversity model. First of all, you can use this cable externally and you will have to stick it on the front of the goggles like that. It's a little bit bulky, but the other option will be to disassemble your Fetcher goggles and you will also have to cut holes on the sides in order to fit in the cable. And this is one of the disadvantages of using this receiver because when opening the Fetcher goggles you are also exposed to some risks and that's why I'm not going to do it in this video, especially because I'm not sure yet if I'm going to change this model with my Trudy receiver. In order to install the main model, first of all connect the diversity connector if you bought the diversity model. Then place it inside its plastic cover, starting from the left side. You need to simply slide it in. Make sure that all the buttons are popped up and not pressed inside. And then simply connect it to the Fetchock receiver module. It's not going to be 100% aligned because this wire is kind of getting in the way. You can see that this is not perfectly installed but I tried a few times and this is the best way I could install it. It just wouldn't go all the way inside, but I tested it and the buttons are working and the model is working. So the best way to install this model would be actually to place it inside the Fetcher goggles, but as I mentioned, I'm not going to do it in this video. Now let's move to the diversity model. So first connect the other end of the diversity cable, make sure the wire is twisted, place it inside its cover, make sure it's firmly fit inside, Remove the sticker from the buzzer and then we'll need to place it inside the head tracking module. So first remove it. I placed this foam inside because there was some light leakage. So I recommend you to put some as well if you don't use anything in the head tracking module. Then start from the left side, make sure it's aligned correctly. And then you will need to use a screwdriver in order to push this part inside. Again, it's going to be better if you're going to insert the wire through the goggles. But if you choose not to, you will have to just push it like that. Make sure you don't damage the wire. As you can see, now the diversity model is properly secured and what I recommend you to do is to put a little bit of hot glue or a tape on this side and actually it's not as bulky as I thought it would be and it makes a good alternative to opening the goggles and risking damaging your goggles in order to place the wire inside. Now let's go over the configuration of the model. So let's go over the settings. You can see that right now we can see the A and B indications on the screen that shows us which antenna is in use. Currently antenna A is in use. Pressing the top and the bottom buttons are now going to toggle between all the channels. Right now we are on frequency F, so we can change only between these channels. Pressing the center button is going to take us to the menu. You can see that over here we can set the frequency. We can set it all the way from 5999 all the way down to 5600. Over here we can change the favorites. F7 right now is a favorite. Also A1. 
if you want to remove the favorite, long press the center button and now the favorite was removed. And if you want to switch the favorite channel, just wait for about two seconds and then it's going to switch to this channel. Over here we have the band scan option, then spectator mode. You can search between all the available channels and then you can switch between them. That is very useful, especially if you're going for a race and then you can switch between all the channels that it finds. So right now the only channel that is available is F7, so this is the only one we can find. Over here we have the quad finder, right now it's set to F8, which is not the correct channel, so let's set it to F7. And now it's on the correct channel, and you can see when I'm moving the camera closer, the bar is getting fuller, and when I'm moving it away, it gets smaller and it will help to find your quadcopter on the field using the RSSI of the video feed. Over here we have the RF analyzer, so you can run some tests. You can see that the best signal is achieved on 5860, which is the channel that I'm using. And finally we can access the settings, you can change the beeps between on and off. If you want to change the settings, you have to short press the center button and then it's going to be changed. You can set the quick boot option between on and off. The reversity mode by automatically it's set to auto. You can either set it to A, B or auto. The reversity speed, which is the change that the receiver toggles between the antennas. By default, it's set to two. You can change it between one and five. The units can be set to row, percentage or DBM. OSD mode can be toggled to on, background, off, or on, so it's going to display the status of the antennas on the screen. The OSD position can be changed between top, middle, or bottom. The LED color can be changed as well. You can set the LED mode in case, of course, you connect an LED. The animated UI can be either turned on and off. And you can also calibrate the RSSI. What you need to do is put uh, the VTX on 25 milliwatt, remove the antennas, and then press the center button. It's going to calibrate the RSSI of this receiver. Now it succeed. And you can save and exit the settings. And you can also perform a factory reset. So if you want to save the settings, hit center, and now it was saved. The next thing I'm going to do is to head outdoors and compare the LaForge V4 side by side with my Furious True D 3.5 receiver. I use the same antennas to make this test fair and hopefully this test is going to help you to decide whether you want to get the V4 or not. As always, if you have any questions about the LaForge V4 module, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.